Hey everybody, what is going on? How is everybody doing this evening? I hope everyone had a happy holiday and a happy Merry Christmas. Let me get rid of this music here. I want to thank everybody for joining again, once again, coming in to finish up our live stream, our mixing kind of series here. Tonight we're going to talk about parallel compression. Let me know if my audio is okay in the chat and we'll get started in a second. We already got 20 some of my people here. This is great. This is great. So this week is uh, part six and we're going to finish up this kind of mixing demonstration I've been doing over the last six weeks. We're going to talk about parallel compression. Talk about a few concepts, give you guys something to think about and maybe even a new way to think about parallel compression if you um, are not someone that uses it currently or maybe has used it in um, in some form or fashion, but maybe not the way I'm going to show you tonight. So before we get started, if you're new here, let us know in the chat if this is your first live stream here at home recording made easy. And if it is, welcome to the family. I appreciate you being here. Um, and I hope you enjoy tonight's demonstration. As you can see across the bottom of the screen, we got a handful of days left on our 50% off uh, all the courses sale at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Just use the co cri uh, coupon code, excuse me, Xmas50 at checkout. It will take 50% off any training course on the website. And if you're new here and you haven't been to homerecordingmadeeasy.com yet, there's a free mixing course right on the homepage. Can't miss it. Big orange button right at the top of the homepage. Click on that, you'll get a free mixing course as well. And when you do that process, you'll sign, you'll give yourself, sign yourself up with a username and password. So you'll have an account at home recording made easy. And then anything that you may want to purchase today or in the future will be in your account. So you'll always have your courses available to you. So make sure you take advantage of the 50% off sale because it is going away and you won't see 50% off anything here until probably next Thanksgiving. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that's what we got going on. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe to YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Follow me on all social media because I'm always posting stuff up there that isn't always a part of YouTube. Um, and check that out as well. And last but certainly not least, if you find this live stream demonstration helpful to you in any way, feel free to use the super chat. It does help me. I really do appreciate it. And I want to thank you in advance. So now that we got all that gobbly goop out of the way, let's go over to the chat. Let's see who's here. We got 25 people here. Let's, uh, let me say hello to everyone. And then we'll jump into our demonstration for this evening. And as always, I will um, do a Q and a after the fact, after the demonstration, if you guys have any questions about tonight's demonstration or anything at all, by the way. Also, Dave, David SJ is here. What's up, brother? Thank God that you're back in our chat. We got all of our technical difficulties worked out. So our moderator's here, and um, I hope you had a great holiday as well, my friend. He's already putting links in the chat that start next Friday, open enrollment uh, opens for mixingmadeeasy.net. Okay, it's open from January 1st to January 5th. You got to get on the email list at mixingmadeeasy.net so you'll be notified when membership enrollment opens. It is open for five days and five days only, and then it closes for an entire year. So this is your one opportunity to join our exclusive community. So if you're someone who's serious about mixing and you really want to learn mixing, you really want to go down deep, and you want to join a community of mixers, check out mixingmadeeasy.net. You will not find a more, uh, a more detailed chock full of content mixing training membership site anywhere on planet earth i could promise you that so i hope you check it out okay let's see who's here dj viv aldi's here hey what's up man how are you um i said you said i'm still waiting for your running not sure what that means but hey what's up dj good to see you jim is here hey jim what's up what's up uh, jim okay cool uh Dwayne is here sounding good over here awesome DJ Big Red is here. Hey, what's up, my friend? Good to see you as well. Uh, DJ Vil Vivaldi says, by the way, there are so many tutorials on parallel compression. I don't know what's new this time, but you'll listen with curiosity. All right. Well, maybe you'll learn something tonight. Maybe you won't. We'll see. I hope you do. I hope you get something out of this. That would be great. That's what I'm here for is to try to help. Okay, everybody's kind of chatting back and forth. Uh, Jim says, I watch EQ and compression videos again. I learn more the second time around since I have a little bit of knowledge under my belt. That's great, Jim. And if you have the brand new, and it sounds like you do, you have the brand new versions of EQ and Compression Made Easy, the ones that were redone in this year, 2020. Um, they're fantastic courses, and if you struggle with compression or EQ in any way, 
even if you don't think you struggle with it, I guarantee you, you'll learn something from those two courses. So I'm glad it's helping you, Jim. Hey, Alberto, what's going on? Alistair's here. Hey, Alistair, what's up? The Acoustic Files is here. Hey, The Acoustic Files. Robbie Craig is here. How, do, how are you? Good to see you. Juan is here. Hey, what's up? We already got 32 people here. This is great. Glad you guys are all hanging out with us on this holiday weekend. And David SJ is putting stuff in the chat. Hey, Randall, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else is here? Who else is here? Uh, Richard Allen McGee's here. What's going on? Good to see you. Milkman. Hey, Milkman. How are you? Good to see you too, my friend. Good to see a lot of people here. Uh, let's see. Check pro on the beat. <laughs> What's up, man? Love your videos. Hey, man, thank you so much. I appreciate you watching the videos. I hope uh, you learned something tonight as well. Leo Sunday is here. You're a first timer looking forward to something new about parallel compression. Cool. Well, I hope it's something new. It's something that I found that um, the way I use parallel compression is different from most people, but we'll find out. I hope you learned something new as well. And if not, if I just confirm what you already knew, then that's good for you as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you're here and welcome to the family if you're a first timer here. That's always awesome. Always get a few new people here every time we do this. My favorite YouTube channel, Mr. Morphus. Hey man, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Appreciate that so much. I really can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys and all of your support. Awesome. Uh, Marissa says, love parallel compression on drums, but I'm curious about other applications. Well, that's where it's most commonly used on drums, and we'll talk about that. Robbie, thank you so much for the super chat, brother. You're very, very, very kind. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. So we will jump into, we'll do the parallel compression thing, and then I'll do a Q&A session afterwards. Dave is here in the chat kind of monitoring things. If you have any questions, he's really good about keeping up on that stuff. Make sure you pay attention to all the links that he's putting in there. Um, because these things are here to help you guys. So make sure um, that you guys uh, check out those links. Okay, they're going to be helpful to you. I can promise you that. So let's get into Studio One here. Let's talk about parallel compression. Let me get up my screen. Let me get my headphones on. Where is my new screen? Studio One picture in picture. Here we go. Okay. And this will be the last week we're going to work on this mix. And then maybe in a few months, we'll do another full-on six or seven week series with a different set of plugins and a different song. What we're gonna start next week, starting on Friday, is gonna be um, something new we're gonna try, where I'm gonna do a live stream every week and we're gonna demo and do a deep dive on a singular plugin. I have so many plugins I have to review that I just have so many of them that I thought maybe we would do it in a live stream format. You guys might enjoy that, give you a chance to see the plugin, listen to some new, some, to some new plugins, ask questions about it and we can learn it together. So hopefully you guys will find that um, helpful. Okay, so for folks that have not been here for the last four or five weeks, this is your first time, which is great. Basically what we've done, we, start with this, we started with this song from scratch about six weeks ago. The name of the band is Amp uh, Angels and Amplifiers. The name of the song is I'm All Right. It's a pop rock tune. And we started going through everything from tape machines to saturation to channel strips, bus compression, reverbs and delays, so on and so forth. And now we're on the last week parallel compression. I want to just give you a quick little minute, minute, maybe maybe a minute, minute and a half of the song so you can hear what we're dealing with if you're new here, so you can see where what song we're working with. So uh, this is a pretty you know stripped down session. It's only got 13 tracks in it. We have a kick, snare, toms, overhead on our drums. We have a percussion track in purple, bass track in blue, two acoustic guitars, an electric guitar in green, a piano track in purple, a lead vocal, and a couple of background vocals. Last week when we talked, we added some reverb to our drums, to our guitars, to our keyboards, and to our, our verb. And you can go back and watch all the prior episodes, by the way. They're all up on the um, YouTube channel, so go check it out after this broadcast. Um, everything is being sent down to a busing system. So we have our drums going to a drum bus, bass going to a bass bus, etc etc and then down here in purple are our parallel compression tracks which we're going to talk about tonight but before we do that let's give a quick listen to the song so you got you have a taste of what we're dealing with here so here is um, a little section of i'm all right by angels and amplifiers here we go oh maybe what i need to do is i need to make sure i got the right interface picked here that would be helpful and we do not
Okay, hopefully I'm on back there with the audio. Sorry about that. Let's try that again, shall we? Here we go. in our lead vocal here for some reason why is that oh come on studio one not going to start messing with me tonight i hope let me just see why we don't have our lead vocal point oh i see why okay let's do that again see and you thought this was all pre-scripted <laughs> okay let's try that again with a vocal this time would be helpful here we go So there's what we got. There's a verse and a chorus for you. Okay. So our mix sounds pretty good. We've been processing this thing for the last seven weeks or six weeks. So now let's talk about parallel compression. So at the end of my drum bus sip system down here, you'll see these tracks in purple. I typically will always keep them over to the far right of the console. That's just the way I like to work, but you could do it however you like. And my basic setup for parallel compression is this. For every bus channel that I have, Okay, so in this case, there are five of them, drum, bass, guitar, keyboards, vocals. I will double that up and I'll have a parallel compression track for each one of those. So in this case, I have one in purple called P drums, P standing for parallel compression, P bass, P guitars, P keys, P vocals, okay? So anytime I have a bus, I will also have a parallel track. Now, most times when we talk about parallel compression for some folks here who said they been, you know, look, they've seen other YouTube videos and such, you know, talking about parallel compression, what's new. Typically, you will see it mostly on drums. That's usually how it's taught. That's where it's most commonly used. And we're going to use that here as well. But I go beyond that. So what I do is we do parallel compression on all the groupings of instruments. Okay, everything, bass, drums, guitars, keys, and vocals. And what this is going to allow us to do is we're going to over compress. And I'm going to demonstrate this for you bus by bus. We're going to over compress these buses. We're going to hit them hard, 10, 12, 15 dB of compression, right? We're going to squash the daylights out of them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the one, you know, the, the parallel track that's in purple, and we're just going to raise the volume ever slow slightly and just tuck it underneath the volume of the regular bus. Okay. So if you've been watching from the beginning of the series, and we talked about all these different concepts about compression along the way, I'm not gonna to reiterate too much of it here. You need to go watch all those videos, okay? But most of the compression that we do during the course of a mix is a very light amount of compression, okay? There's, in this case, I think five or six different stages of compression that every single one of these tracks have already run through. And in each stage of that compression, there's a little bit of compression being done, a dB or two, three at most. So for example, our drums, all kick, snare, toms, overheads, are all being compressed already, but very, very little. Not much at all, okay? Maybe three dB at most, but across five different stages. And if you wanna know what the five different stages are, you gotta go back and watch the prior weeks. So overall, our tracks and our song is, very, is compressed very moderately. Okay, I call it controlled compression. Some people may call it some other things, but when I say controlled compression, I'm talking about a very light amount of compression just to squeeze the tracks a little bit 
to even out the dynamics just a tiny bit and to more or less add the specific tone of the compressor that I'm using and imprint that on the audio. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you is before parallel compression, we haven't really over compressed this song at all. We've compressed it very, very lightly. Parallel compression conversely is the exact opposite of that, where we're gonna over compress it. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna thicken up the track. It's gonna bring more life to the track, more punch to the tracks. And then we're gonna tuck it in underneath and you're gonna hear the difference, okay? So if you really wanna learn also too, Dave, I'm sure if he hasn't put this up already, there's a whole course on the website called The Power of Parallel Compression, okay, where it's an over an hour long. You can go check out that course. You get it 50% off this weekend, um, and that will go even deeper than what I'm going to go in here tonight, okay? We're going to show you the basics tonight, but if you really want to learn, you know, what kind of compressors do you use, why do you choose certain compressors, blah, 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 go watch The Power of Parallel Compression. So let me demonstrate. So let's start with drums because that's where it's most commonly used. And just so you know, you can use any compressor. It really doesn't matter what compressor you use. So whatever plugins you have, this will work in, yes, even stock plugins. But for the sake of demonstration here, I'll just pick a few waves, some common ones that I'll, I would tip that I might use. So for example, on drums, I might use something like uh, the CLA 76 and 1176. That's the most common one that you will see on parallel compression. If you go watch other YouTube videos, more times than not, when they do parallel compression on drums, they will use the 1176. And you may say, well, why is that, Dave? Well, there's many reasons for it, but one of the more common reasons is the 1176 has this unique feature called the all button mode on the ratio. And you can see it down here on the 1176 here, it says all. And what that does is it goes beyond the 20 to one ratio and it puts it into more of a limiting mode. And it does something very unique to the way the compressor reacts. On a real, P on a real 1176, like a you know physical piece of hardware, they the engineer would put their fingers on all the buttons and physically press them all in. There was no such thing as an all button. Although many clones today of 1176 as different manufacturers that make an 1176 will add, even on the hardware, an all button. Not all of them, some of them do. Um, and in this case, the 1176 by CLA and Waves, they have that on here, okay? We're gonna do a slow attack and a fast release on this. Okay, we're gonna keep it, even though this plugin has a blue and a blue stripe and a black face, we'll use the black face because that's the most common used. I'm gonna uh, solo up the parallel track here just so you could hear what I'm doing. Now the trick is we're gonna take all of our drums and we're gonna send it as a send to this P drums track or parallel drums track, which will run through this compressor. So we're gonna do this on a send. So if I come down the send and go to P drums and do everything pre-fader, okay? And usually I'll put zero dB on the send level, depending on the way your DAW, whatever DAW you use, you may adjust that a little differently than here. And I'm gonna do all the close mics. I'll even do the overheads in this case because there are no room mics here. If there were room mics here, I typically wouldn't do the rooms. It depends on the track, but typically it's the close mics is where I'll typically do it on drums, but it depends. But for this demonstration, we're gonna do one on all. Okay, and then we're gonna play this back. Oops. Come on now, play it back. Okay, here, let's uh, solo this up. Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing here, so you can see I'm compressing, you know, 10, 15 dB on the all buttons mode. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this parallel track and I'm just gonna creep it up a little bit. I'll take it away. Bring it back in. Take it away. Bring it back in. So on this particular track, you can hear the drum, the snare drum gets a little bit more pokey. It's got a little bit more of a whack to it. It's gonna help cut through this mix, which you'll hear in a minute, okay? Don't turn it up. You can see how, how little I have this P drums turned up and I'll get to the reasons why in a second, but just, just notice that. We're gonna do the same thing on bass and I'll just grab any old compressor. We'll take an LA-2A. It doesn't really matter, but we'll use that because it just happens to be right in front of me. 
And we're going to do the same thing with base. We're going to go to P base. Here we go, pre-fader. We're going to go zero dB on the send level. Well, we'll solo up our base here for a minute. Okay, let's get a lot of compression happening. Now, just so you know, some people will ask, well, where, how much compression are you using? You're using a lot. How much is a lot? On these tracks, I'm using at least 10 dB. About 10 dB. I don't get too picky about, is it 10 dB? Is it 20 dB? Is it five? I just want it to be a lot, over 10 dB of compression. Okay, like we're doing here. Now I'm gonna creep up this bass parallel track. Now mute the drums so you can hear what we're doing. That's before. You'll hear, if you're listening to this on good studio monitors or good headphones and not earbuds, you will hear the real bottom end, the real low note of the bass get thicker. It's without. With. It's very subtle. Let me bring the drums back in. Now I'm going to take them both away. That's before. Little loop around. After. Before. After. Hear how it gets a little more punchy? It's not louder, very slightly louder. It's not a volume thing. Don't mistake in this for a volume thing. This is where people get into trouble. They use this too much. It's a thickener. It thickens things up. It brings a little bit more punch and clarity to the upper mids, and it gets things to cut through more, okay? Now, let's do the same thing on guitars, okay? So we'll grab a guitar. We'll grab. We'll use a CLA-3A, just because, why not? Oh, I, did I grab a mono version of this LA-2A? I did. Let me grab the stereo version. I forget with Wave, sometimes you need to do that. What did I do here? Oh, hold on here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me grab the stereo version of the LA-2A. Okay, now let's grab an LA-3A. We'll grab the stereo version. We'll do the same thing. We're gonna send all of our guitars to the P Guitars track. Now I happen to have acoustics and electrics on the same track just for simplicity reasons. Sometimes I'll put the acoustics on its own bus in there and the electrics on its own bus. And therefore I would also have an acoustic parallel track and an electric parallel track. But for, for, the, for the sake of simplicity, I put them on one track in this particular exercise. Okay, so we're gonna come over here. We're gonna put it on all three here. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna solo up our guitars. That's before. After. Okay, now I'm gonna take them away on all three so you can hear the accumulative effect because that's what this really is. This is a subtle accumulative effect thing. It's not just um, one track, you know, we do it on just the drums. Well, the drums will start to cut through, but we wanna do this subtly on all, all the groupings. So here's with uh, bass, excuse me, drums, bass, guitars. Before. After. Before. After, okay? Keyboards, got the idea? Let's grab something else. I'll grab another 1176 just because why not? We just happen to be sitting here and maybe I'll use the the blue stripe on this one. Um, same thing, we'll smash the daylights out of it on this and we'll do this kind of a deal and let's send our keyboards there. We only have uh, one keyboard track here. So let's send that to P keys, okay. 
Let's hit this one and see what this does. Okay, and then lastly, let's do our vocals and then we'll do the whole thing, turn on, turn off, so you can hear the cumulative effect of everything. Um, we could go with, let's just grab an LA-2A again, just because why not? And let's do the same thing on our vocals. Now again, I have all the vocals going to one bus. Usually I would have the lead vocal and the background separate, but in the spirit of keeping this easy for demonstration, we'll do it this way. Okay, so let's follow that over here. Let's do the same thing. Okay, now let's do all of them together so you can hear the difference. Now, once I have the relationship between the five in this case, and I'm doing this quickly, now I can highlight them all and I can turn them all up and down. And what I do is I'm not, again, this is not a volume thing. I'm listening until I can just hear it get slightly louder and I'm backing it off a little. So this is a real subtle thing, okay? And it's intended to be that way. The season's about to change. It's changing all around. Okay, so keep your eye on the mute buttons here as I'm muting them and turning them all on and off. Okay, so we'll start with them on and we'll take them away. Okay, so can you hear the difference? Let me know in the chat if you can hear the difference. It's subtle, but it's there. On the drums, you're listening for the kick and the snare primarily. You'll hear the snare cut through the mix a little bit more. On the bass, you're listening for the real low end of the bass. It's the sub, it's the real bottom end of it, the thickness of it, okay? On the guitars, they get a little bit more present. There's a little bit more sparkle to them, okay? The keyboard, same thing. Now the keyboard in this particular song, the piano is very just kind of single chords very kind of staccato. You'll hear those things ring through. They have a little bit more of a bell-like tone to them. And then the vocals will just help it sit on the mix a little bit more and it just gets a little thicker sounding. The season's about to change It's changing all around Okay, now you can use more or less of it depending on your personal taste. Again, I like to do this in a sparing way, but if we turn it up a little bit just so you could hear the effect a little bit better. Okay, so hopefully you can hear the difference. So now you say, well, why do we, why are we doing that? Why am I only using such a little amount? Why not turn them up more? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The biggest reason is because the more you turn up these parallel tracks, because they are so over compressed, what we don't want to do is we don't want to give the track a sense of being over compressed. We want the track to retain its dynamics with that more controlled compression feel, as I was talking about earlier, where things are done in a more subtle and a very light way. This is just used to kind of bring some life, some thickness and some punch to the mix, but without overdoing it, that's the first thing. The second thing where you really need to go watch the power of parallel compression if you wanna understand this next concept a little further, is not only is it adding that, that, uh, that, that thickness and that life and kind of breathing some extra polish into the mix, but you're also now gaining the benefits of the tone of the compressors and the different compressors that you choose on the different parallel tracks. And as I said a few minutes ago, it doesn't matter what compressors that you use, you could use an 1176 across all of them. You can use a stock plug-in across all of them. 
But if you really want to gain the benefit from this technique, it is to use different compressors. Now, which ones you use on which tracks, go watch the power of parallel compression and why I might choose one compressor over another. But by using different third-party compressors, and in this case, emulations of old analog equipment, you are now also infusing a different tonal characteristic, okay, tone. Forget the fact that it's a compressor for a second, and all compressors sound a little bit differently tonally, and depending on how many parallel tracks you have, in this case it's kind of small, there's only five, but I've done sessions where there's 10, depending on how big the session is, you're adding more of that flavor, that tonal flavor to your mix that you didn't have before you use parallel compression, which is one of the reasons why, because someone may ask in the chat if they're paying attention, you guys all with me? I don't know if the chat room's still working. I can't tell if it's still working or not. Hopefully you're all with me. I see the stream is working. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, right, because some people will say, well, couldn't you just on the bus, um, like here's the drum bus, for example, right? On the regular drum bus, here's the drum bus. This particular compressor that we use has a mix knob. Couldn't you just you over compress it on here and just use your mix knob to do your wet dry thing? The mix knob that you see on most modern plug-in compressors is to do exactly for what we're doing here, which is to use it in a more parallel compression mode. And I've had people say, well, why wouldn't you just do it here? Why do you have to add all these other tracks and add all these other compressors? Well, the answer is you really don't have to. But the reason why I do that is because if I just did it here on this compressor, let's say on the drum bus, if I just did it on the FG Gray here, I could. But then I don't gain the benefit. There's two things I don't gain the benefit. I lose a little bit of control because I don't have the separate track with the separate fader that I could kind of tweak it in the way I want to fly it in. Number two, I don't then have the benefit of adding the extra tonality, in this case, that this 1176 brings to the overall drum sound. If I do it all just with one compressor, that means my parallel sound and my uncompressed or my normal bus sound is with the same compressor. This adds a little bit more of a different dimension to the mix. It adds a little bit more tonal flavor. It gives you a little bit more of a unique sound and it gives you a little bit more control on how you wanna do it. So you could do it with just one compressor by using your mix knob, but I never, ever, ever do it that way. Even though it takes me longer to set it up this way, I get some extra benefits here that I don't get if I did it on one single compressor. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense. Okay, the chat seems like it's working. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so that is kind of why I do it the way that I do it, okay? And then again, now because they're on separate tracks, I have the ability to just kind of turn them all up or down and kind of feather them in, if you will, to the normal buses. You can also use this in a little bit more advanced technique. You can also automate these parallel tracks to maybe they're a little bit lower in the mix during the verses and maybe during the courses I'm giving a little bit more a little bit more juice it also will pump up the volume of the track a little bit in the choruses which is a which is a common automation technique you know maybe boost up the choruses a little bit in volume instead of doing it on the master fader maybe I do it with these compressors and these parallel tracks okay so by having these separate tracks I have more options available to me Yes, it takes longer. Yes, there's more tracks to manage. Yes, there's more plugins to manage, but you get more, um, more options to you, okay? And it makes a big difference. And I can tell you that 99% of the mixes that I do always have some level of parallel compression in them. Because when you do a, this is a smaller session, but let's say this session was 30, 40, 50 tracks, right? with horns and you know more electric guitars and just a bigger session in general, this technique becomes much more powerful. And what little, what difference you hear subtly here. Without parallel compression, the track sounds flat. You don't notice it until I take away the parallel tracks. It almost seems like the track just loses a little bit of life. It loses a little bit of punch. It loses a little bit of vibe. 
As soon as you bring the parallel tracks back in, if it's done subtly, all of a sudden you go, ooh, what's that? It sounds a little bit more lively. It puts about another 10% on the mix, okay? That's why I do it across all the instruments and not just on drums. Because the way parallel compression is typically taught, at least of all the people that I've seen demonstrate this, is that it's used usually on drums to get it to cut through a dense mix. They think about it as cutting through the mix and getting the drums to cut through the mix. And that's the main motivator of it. That's one reason to do it. But there's many other reasons to do it. It's that, it's the tone of the compressors, right? It's the control of having all the instruments going through there so the whole track now has more thump and some more polish to it, right? So it's not just to cut through the mix. That's only part of it. Okay, so what I would encourage you to do is to work to do this on all of your groupings of instruments because it makes a difference. And once you have this in, you will never mix another song again without it because it definitely makes a huge, huge difference. The bigger the session is, it's even more obvious, as I said. Okay, so. If you want to learn more about this and you really want to get into compressor choice and that kind of thing, that's the power parallel compression will help you with that. But there is a strategy that I also use to what compressors do I choose and why? Okay, again, you can use any compressors, but I would tell I would encourage you to experiment with different kinds of compressors. Okay. It's all about the tone and the uniqueness. And it's like every one of these compressors. I look at this compressor as if we were making a soup and this mix was a soup and each one of these compressors is just a different seasoning in the soup. And depending on how many different seasonings you put into that soup will radically change the way the soup tastes, right? Same thing with sound. Depending on the compressors that we choose, depending on how many of the compressors that we choose, how many buses we have and all that stuff will radically change the way the mix sounds. And that's important, okay? When you get into mixing, especially in the digital world, it is hugely important in my mind, what I try to teach my students is over Mixing Made Easy as well, is that there's a difference between a mix that sounds good and a mix that feels good, okay? All of us starting off, well, when we all start, nothing even sounds good, let alone feels good, right? <laughs> We all start at the beginning. And after about a year, if you're taking good quality training and you're doing and you're learning how to mix, after about a year of consistent mixing, your tracks and your mixes will typically start to sound better. Okay. Meaning the clarity's there, the separations there, the balances are there. I can hear all the instruments. There's not any real weird frequencies happening. Your phase is usually pretty good. It sounds good. And when you work in the digital world, especially when you use mostly stock plugins, it sounds good, but it sounds sterile. It sounds a little flat. It doesn't feel good. The music doesn't jump out of the speakers or jump out of the headphones in this case. Okay. Where the crossing point from when a mix sounds good to when a mix feels good is when you start to use all the combinations of the things that we try to teach here at Home Recording Made Easy uh, with different types of plugins, understanding how compressors work and EQs work, how we mix and match different ones together so the tone becomes different from one mix to the next, and you developing your own sound, your own signature kind of sound of the way you mix. And that, that has everything to do with usually, once you know the basics of mixing, plugin choice how you use them, when you use it. Do you know the difference between an 1176 black and an 1176 blue? Why would, what, what are the differences? It's the same thing, one just looks different. They sound radically different. But if you don't know that, then you wouldn't know when to use the blue and when to use the black, right? That's just one example, okay? So this is one of those techniques, parallel compression across all the instruments, which will start to help your mixes feel good not just sound good, okay? And I'll demonstrate it one more time. Without parallel compression. OK, 
Okay, so with parallel compression, it just feels better. It feels like the track is more finished, okay? So that's how I use parallel compression. And there's other, other ways I use it as well, but that's the, this is the most common way to do it. And I wouldn't just encourage you to put it into your workflow um, because I think once you try it, once you use it a bit, once you get used to it, you'll go, oh, wow, this, is, this really works. I can't imagine doing another mix without it. But again, I'll say it again, do it subtly. Don't just crank up the parallel tracks because you kind of really you kind of really defeat the whole purpose of doing it. And as soon as the track just becomes a lot louder, that's not really the point. Um, and then what will happen is your over compressed tracks will be too close in volume to your more controlled compressed tracks. And the overall mix will start to sound small. It won't have the you'll lose some of the bigness in the mix. OK, because people think that when you compress stuff, it makes things sound bigger. That's not really true. If you over compress things, it makes things sound smaller. Okay. Especially when you do it in this fashion and you do lots of over compression, it will start to squash the track and it will sound small. It won't sound big anymore. Okay. So that's why you have to be careful and you got to kind of tuck them underneath and you can't get too crazy with it because you can overcook it. You know what I mean? So I hope that makes sense for everybody. I hope that you enjoyed that part of the demonstration. Let me go back to the chat. Let me take any questions that you guys might have and let me see if I could, it could be about this or about anything and uh, see if I can help you in any way. Okay. So hopefully you found that helpful to you. So let's go back to the chat, see who's here. Okay. If you have any questions or if you asked any questions up above, go ahead and ask now. I'd be glad to help you in any way that I can. Um, let me see. Dave's got the par power parallel compression um, link in the chat if you want to check that out. Uh, Chris Cap says, hey, Chris Cap, how are you? How would you compare using the console shaper to this parallel compression style of mixing? It's not the same. The console shaper by PreSonus is kind of, eh. it's not, it's not very impressive to be honest. This is completely, it's, I, I shouldn't say this is completely different. It is a little different. You could try it. If you have studio one, use the console shaper and try it. Uh, but the console shaper is not a compressor. It's a, it's a console emulator, sort of. That's what they say it is, but it's probably one of the worst console emulation plugins I've ever heard. Um, but the console shaper pro that they have, which is the paid version, unless today, if they, unless they, uh, unless they include it in the professional version, when you buy it today, I don't know, but the console shaper that comes for free with studio one, that one, this, what they call it, the CTC kind of, uh, the console shaper pro, which gives you the, the choice of different, um, consoles, that one's a lot better. Um, but it's different because those are not compressors, Re you know, they're console emulators. So, but you can try it. Um, I would use compressors instead of this. Although we did use console emulation in part two or three of this series. So yes, definitely use console emulation, but not for this particular technique, if that makes sense. Okay, let's see. But good question. Uh, Leo Sunday. Hey, Leo. Good idea. Automate P tracks for more thickness during the course. Yes, you can do that. That's that's one technique you can definitely use. Uh, Leo says, question, would you use parallel compression on the master bus? You can. I don't uh, because I'm kind of doing it here. So the, the way I'm doing it and the way I demonstrated it tonight, there's really no reason for me now to do it on the master bus. Although I have seen people will add two master buses, one and they'll route everything to both. One they'll over compress, one they won't over compress, and then they'll kind of blend it together. You can do that, but again, um, you don't have the finite control as you do with a drums, bass, guitars, vocals. You know, I can dial in as much or as little of each one of those individual groupings of instruments as opposed to the entire mix. Um, so I don't typically do parallel compression on the master bus because I don't really need it. OK, because, again, um, if unless you unless you've watched all the weeks that we've talked about this session outside of parallel compression has a minimum of five stages of compression already. So, again, you know, in the spirit of you got to be careful that you don't now, again, just put parallel. If you just compress the daylights out of everything, everything starts to sound small. So the answer is no, I wouldn't do it on a master bus if I'm doing it this way. But I've seen people not do what I showed you tonight and just add a second master bus and kind of blend the over compressed master bus with the not over compressed bus. So you can do that same concept, but a little less uh, control, I think that way. 
Okay, let's see. Any other questions? Uh, Chris says, thanks for the input. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Robbie says, what do you have on your master bus right now? Uh, what's on there right now is just a virtual console collection uh, and a virtual tape machine. There's not even a master bus compressor on this mix right now. We talked about compression. We talked about bus processing last week. Um, would I put a little bit of a bus compressor on? Maybe just to touch it, a kiss, kiss it a couple of dB, probably. But um, I wouldn't be doing any heavy compression on the master bus. I don't ever do any heavy compression on the master bus. It's usually a two to one ratio. And maybe I'm just kind of kissing the needle a dB or two at most if there's a peak that pokes through. Typically. But right now, there's not even one on this mix. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? I mean, we guess we got 50 people here, which is great. Any questions at all? I'd be happy to take them. Robbie says he remembers the master tape from a few weeks. Yeah, right. So on the master bus, there is a master tape machine, um, which is a compressor, right? A tape machine is a compressor. Um, and there's also a console emulator, which is a compressor, you know, to some degree. Uh, so that's what I mean. There's different stages of compression already happening. So how many people here tonight um, that thought that they've have has everyone seen unless you've been following me for a while. If you're new here, have you ever seen anybody demonstrate parallel compression on all the instruments, or is that something new to you? Did you learn Did you learn something new, or is this something that you've seen before? Um, it's I'm sure there's other people that do it. It's not as common as uh is is just doing it like I said on drums, but I'd be interested to know. So that's cool. So I got 53 people here. Any any questions? Let me just make sure I got everything going on here in the chat. I'm, getting, I'm catching all the latest comments. Uh, DJ says, if you're liking the information, make sure you're slapping the thumbs up. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> make sure you're slapping the thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. That's right. Make sure you're doing that. Uh, let's see. Leo says, it's new for you, but you're pretty new to the whole game. Well, that's okay, man. That's, hey, you're in the right place. If you're new to mixing, I mean, you have, you, I don't know that you could find a better reset of resources. I mean, there's, a, there's so much mixing training for all, all different levels of experience on the website, a home recording made easy, Leo, if you haven't already checked that out, not to mention mixingmadeeasy.net if you want to get into that. So if you're new to mixing or if you've been doing it a while and mixing, you know, some areas of mixing confuse you or overwhelm you, or you've been working with it for a while and you've been doing what most people do, run out and buy all these great plugins during the Black Friday sales. And no matter what plugins you use, you don't seem to get the results that you're looking for, then you're in the right place. That's what we do here. That's most of what I do today is teaching mixing. We do recording and we do other stuff too and mastering, but mixing is the bulk of it. So you are in the right place, my friend. Uh, Robbie says, all new for me. That's cool, man. I'm glad. The more new people here, the better. The more new people here, the better. Uh, let's see. Richard Allen says, my headphones were lying to me. Mm, what do you mean by that, Richard? Uh, Mark says, hey, Mark, what's up? If your computer is not powerful to have compressors across all the channels, would parallel compression be better? Oh, would the parallel compression be better or is it a different concept if your computer? Let me read that again. If your computer is not pow is not powerful enough to have all the compressors across all the channels. Well, most of the most of the I mean most of the, a lot of these plugins they are so CPU light intensive that you if you have a computer that's, you know, 6 years old or newer, you should be fine. You should be fine. Um but if you, but if, yeah, if you're right, if you, if you don't have a powerful enough computer, uh, parallel compression is a different concept. I understand what you're asking. If you can't, if you can't put all a compressor of some kind on all your tracks, well, can parallel compression be used for that? It's kind of a different concept. It's not really the same thing. It's not really the same thing. I wouldn't just only use parallel compression and not compress anything else through the mix. I would never do that. So it is kind of a different concept. Uh, Richard says it showed me that I need still more work on my mixes. Oh, about your headphones. Um, well, yeah, it depends on the headphones that you're using and, um, mixing in headphones could be very beneficial, especially if you don't have a good set of studio monitors or a well-treated mixing environment. So headphones are not a bad thing. A lot of it has to do with just learning your headphones, learning and listening to lots of commercial music, commercial releases on your headphones. So you know what commercial mixes sound like and how they sound on your headphones, um, and then when you're mixing using reference tracks, 
um, and having the basic training and fundamentals. And again, if you're new to mixing, you're in the right place. I mean, you are. There's no doubt about that. Just go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. There's, you know, all kinds of beginners courses there on mixing. You can always email me if you're not sure which one you should pick up or which one's right for you and I can kind of guide you toward the, to that. And I could try to help you. Uh, Jim wants to know who got studio, who got new studio gear for the holidays. Yeah. Did any of you get new studio gear? I didn't. I didn't get any gear. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Do you happen to know much about solid state logics, flex verb and native plugins? I know a lot about their native plugins. Um, I do have them all. Um, I've demoed all of, I don't know if I demoed the flex verb on the YouTube channel, but I have demoed a lot of their other native plugins on the YouTube channel um, last year and uh, they're great. They're fantastic. And I'm actually going to be using those um, in February's content at mixingmadeeasy.net. I'm going to be mixing the whole song for my members using only those plugins so they can see them all in action. They're great plugins though, is, is the, you know, thing. Uh, Richard said, I asked you not too long ago about what happens to buy for mixing. Um, can you retype it, Richard? There's a lot of comments here, brother. If you could re-ask, I can uh, try to help. Uh, Juan says, hey, Juan. Hey, Dave, need a new interface. I'm looking for, at the Motus, the PreSonus, ISO station, and other PreSonus bundles. Have you used the I IO station? No, I haven't used it. But I can tell you that a Motu would probably be better. How many inputs do you need and what's your budget? The IO station's cool, it's cool, but it's an entry-level interface. And if that's all you're looking for, cool. If you're looking for something a step up, I probably lean more towards the Motus myself. Make sure to, um, yeah, that you just, you know, that's what I would do. Uh, let's see. Oh, Richard said, I suggested the end. Oh, oh, for the headphones. Oh, these headphones. Yeah, I did suggest them. Did I suggest them too? Yeah, they're great headphones. You just, th these are great for mixing. I mean, I've been using them now for a while and I like them. I get really accurate mixes here. So if you're using these headphones, um, it's not your headphones aren't the problem, my friends. And so you bought them and you thought he made a mistake. No, no, no. It's not the head. If you have these headphones, your headphones are not the problem. Okay. It, you have to, you have to get more in tune with the basic fundamentals of, of mixing. And that's really what it is. The good news is you got some of the best mixing headphones for uh, probably for under a thousand bucks that you can get. And I mix on these every day. And so I can tell you that your headphones you bought are great headphones. Um, and if you've, oh, you figured out that when you, when you're, after you bought these, you went back and listened to your old ones and your old ones were lying to you. I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, I want to also, what is better monitors? Oh, monitors direct to my iMac or to my interface. Oh, to your interface for sure. Depending on the interface, because the interface, if you have a decent interface with, with eight good good converters in them, then yes, definitely want it. You want to hook up your monitors to your audio interface. Okay. Uh, let's see. How do I feel? Hi, King. How are you? Good to see you, my friend. Uh, how do I feel about the new Pro Tools Carbon? I have no, new Pro Tools Carbon. I have no idea. I've never, I don't know. Don't know. Uh, Juan says, Sweetwater's all out of Motus. Oh, really? Yeah. I know they're popular. Yeah, right now, I mean, they've had, they got so many deals at Sweetwater that they're maybe out of stock on popular items right now. I mean, they've been running crazy deals for like the last five or six weeks. Um, and make sure you use my affiliate link. Dave typed it in the chat up above. Um, it helps support me uh, here at the channel, but you don't pay anything more. So if you buy something at Sweetwater, you can use that link. You can put that link on your desktop and you can use it anytime, not just during the holiday seasons, but all calendar year. And, that's, uh, and that'll really help. Uh, Dave Edwards. Hey, Dave, how are you? Can I use the pre as Adam MIDI for orchestra sounds and for adding vocal sounds? Ah, I would think so. I don't have an Adam, but yeah, that is not what it's for. It's a MIDI controller. So you should be able to do that. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't show you how to do it because I don't do that with it. I don't even have one, but I, I know that that's what that piece of gear is for, among other things, tapping out and playing drums on your little drum pads, but it can definitely be used for what you're for what you're suggesting. Uh, let's see. Robbie says, I listened to your podcast on room treatment. So instead of plugins, I bought some panels. Very good idea. Smart investment. Great. I'm glad that you listened to the podcast and you bought the most important thing that you can buy for your mixes. If you're going to mix on monitors is acoustic treatment, not plugins. Right? So good. Good job, Robbie. That's absolutely what you should have done. 
And now you're going to get the Atoms and AX7s next. Those are great monitors. I've never used them myself, but I know a few colleagues that do. They're really good monitors. So if you have good acoustic treatment placed in the right spots with those Atoms set up in the right spot, you should have no problem with your monitoring system, right? The, the, you, got, you got the right gear. Now you just got to get your ears and your techniques down, right? And you're, you're ready to go. The gear is not, won't be in your way. That's for sure. That, that's a good, uh, those are good, uh, good, good speakers you picked up or you're going to pick up for sure. Cool. Uh, any other questions? Anything else, guys? Anything else? If not, you're going to let me out of here early tonight, which, hey, would be fine with me. <laughs> But I'm here to help you guys in any way I can. Wasn't sure. We got a pretty good turnout tonight. Wasn't too sure day after Christmas. Hope you all had a good holiday. Most people maybe are tied up with their family and so on and so forth. And so, so yeah, so I hope you enjoyed uh, this series anyway. This is, you know, we did six six weeks of this. Um, we'll, we'll do another mixing series if you guys want to. Maybe in a few months we'll use a different song, different set of tools and plugins. And we'll take some more deep dives into, into specific plugins. But going forward for the next few weeks, I'm gonna we're gonna do um, just a specific plugin demo. We're gonna do plugin live plugin demos is what we're gonna do, and see how you guys like that. Hopefully, you guys will check that. I got a ton of great plugins by a ton of great companies. Some of you may have heard of before. Some of them you may have never heard of before, and I think you guys will enjoy that. Uh, Robbie says thanks. See you on the next one. Well, thanks, Robbie. I appreciate you stopping in. All right, last chance. Any questions at all? Anything at all? Now's the time to ask. Make sure you stay uh, to the stay close to the YouTube channel. Make sure you go use your coupon code Xmas50, 50% off, only for a few more days. So go get your courses now at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Leo says, thanks, very informative. I bookmarked both the website and I'll be checking out your courses. Cool, Leo. And if you have any questions about courses or, hey, this is what I want to do, what should I buy? I'm not really sure. Just, just send me an email and I'd be glad to help. If you don't have any of the courses, if, you, if, if it's your first time there um, and you're in the beginning stages, check out the Mixing Beginners Pack. It's a three-course pack. Now, it's already discounted, so the coupon code won't apply to it because it's a bundle where I've already heavily discounted it. But it's uh, three courses. It's EQ, Compression, and Mixing Made Easy Volume 1. That's a good place to start if you don't have any of the courses. Um so, but if you want any information, just email me. And I'd be glad to uh, help. Uh, Juan says, post the affiliate link again. Dave, if you could do that, if you wouldn't mind, post the uh, Sweetwater affiliate link again. Uh, that would be great. And again, Juan, you can use that 12 months out of the year. And I do appreciate you doing that. It really does help me out a lot. Um, and so I do appreciate it. And Sweetwater's the best. But I'm sure Dave will put it in the chat. There it is. Thank you, Dave. I do appreciate that. Okay. So if no one has any more questions... I up. Oh, let's see. Richard says, "Do you do any MIDI work? Uh, MIDI work? Mm, a little, not really, not not really. I mean, usually, um, sometimes MIDI drums and stuff. But do I? Do, I don't use a lot of VST instruments and those kinds of things. That's usually not what's sent to me. Normally, it's audio stuff. Uh, let's see. Robbie says, "Is MME up and ready for sign up, or do we have to wait till January first? You have to wait till January first. <laughs> if your name's on the on the email list, Robbie, you'll get an email. You have to wait, but don't worry, you're not going to miss any content because you're going to have, um, you'll have in January. January's content also December's is always two months available to all members. So when you join Mixing Made Easy, let's say in January, um." You will have January's content and December's content available to you. And then on February 1st, December's gets taken down and I add February's. So you'll have January and February. And then we that's how it rotates. Okay. So that's the way it works. If you want, oh, some people have asked me, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention this because someone asked about when we can join. Um, people have asked me, um, if I join, is there any way to go back and get some of the old content that they're not going to have access to? Um, the answer is yes. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna have a web page set up on the MixingMadeEasy.net site at one point soon where we're going into our third year now. So we have two solid years of products that if you want to go and you want to purchase a certain month, you'll be able to sample, listen to a snippet of the song that we mixed, and you find a song that you like that you like to mix yourself, you can have access to that content. You'd have to purchase it. Um, separately, um, but it'll be at a really discounted price. It won't. It won't be like. It won't be as much as paying for a month. It'll be a lot less than that. 
but I, I don't have that set up yet, but it will be set up to where you can get the back catalog if you choose to. Um, and that might be something really cool for some of you guys to get if you find a specific song that you like. But yeah, it'll be on January 1st. And again, it's just from the 1st to the 5th. January 5th at midnight, January 6th, 12 a.m., that membership enrollment will expire um, and you'll have to wait another year to be before you can get back in. So hopefully I'll see you there, Robbie. Yeah, it's only another week away, brother. Don't worry. Um, and you'll, you'll learn all about it. And if you're on the email list, you will get a special email from me with a little video and a place for you to sign up and join. So hopefully you'll join among some other, uh, other folks as well. Okay. All right, man. Well, thank you so much again for joining me uh, this week and stay close to your emails. So you'll know what next week when we're going to do our first live plugin demo. Um, and hopefully I'll see some of you guys next week as well. So until next week, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a great night, everybody.